Hey guys, I just wanted to talk to you real quick about the RCPs. Here's the RCPs that we use at Dallas. Come on over, I'll show you. So when you first walk in, we have camera one, two, three, and four. If you notice, the RCPs are different because these cameras are different. These are the robotic cameras. These are the manned cameras that we have here. Also at the shading position, even the video engineering position, you'll notice we have a monitor, which is a, the most expensive monitor we have in house. It's uh, uh, one of the best monitors around. It's a Plura. We also have a uh, waveform monitor built into it. We can also put up here a vector scope or we can display them both. So lots of flexibility there. And then we also have a waveform monitor down here, which I'd like to use this one to calibrate to. And I like to use that one during the event because my eyes are up here instead of having to look down there. So when I first sit down, you have no idea uh, who's been here before. You have no idea what shape the uh, RCPs have been been left in so you want to check them out as if you were the first person to sit down to it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take the panel active button. If it's off you want to turn it on so that enables this panel. Camera 2, uh, if you notice right here, has a 2, that's camera 2, that's camera 3. Here's the joystick. If we look at the monitor that's not the camera 2 that I'm looking for so I'm going to depress the uh, joystick. When I do it switches to camera two on my monitor. Uh, then I want to talk about some of the key buttons up here. Uh, you got this button here, I want you to be aware of. It's called Cam PW, which is camera power. You can toggle the power on or off. If I press that, it would go off and it would send a signal to the CCU and empower that camera off. If I press it again, then the camera would, would boot back up. Uh, over here, we have bars, and I don't know if you can get a shot of this and that at the same. But when I press bars, you will see bars go up, and that's the NTSC bars, if you need to calibrate the camera or the monitors or whatever. We also have close, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but that's actually closing uh, as if I walked up and put the lens cap on the camera. Okay. Uh, these others, I don't want you to mess with. This right here, white and black, is for the white and black balance, and we'll go over more of that in the class. You'll see some of that. Uh, this next row, you won't mess with. This you will. This is called Scene and Function. So right now, if I press Scene, it will call up. It'll show all the five scenes. Uh, and in class, we'll learn about the scenes and how we use them. Basically, they're just storage uh, locations. So right now, three is highlighted. So we're actually using Scene 3. So after we color balance by white balancing and black balancing, uh, we saved that to scene three. If I wanted to recall scene two, I just press it and you'll see it switch. And if it was different than scene three, you would actually see the colors change. So there's sometimes you have a camera uh, that might be pointed at the stage using one color temperature of light, and then it turns in another part of the event and turns back towards the people in the auditorium and the lighting might be a different color temperature. In that case, the shader, video engineer, would come in here during the, say, the worship and speaking part would be on scene three, and then if we white balanced in, in with the house lights for the auditorium, when we start taking those shots, we just switch over to, to scene two. So basically, it just allows you to recall a snapshot of what your white and black balance settings were. Okay, I like to leave this back on function because this gives me kind of a, a main menu to look at. If you notice here on this particular RCP, we have indie filters. You got, you got one. And if I push up arrow or down arrow, it's not moving because these cameras do not have um, programmable uh, uh, indie filters. If it was a camera that could, as I go up and down, you would see that one go to one, two, three, or four and that would select the different uh, neutral density filters. Uh, CC is also filters. We don't have any in that camera as well, but that would be for the color correction. Uh, and you could, it could be a star filter, it could be uh, uh, a color tint, it could be a number of things. Shutter, um, you probably won't ever mess with it, but if you have any rolling lines or issues, uh, the way you would do it is you would touch that. These buttons become virtual buttons, which, uh, which will work. As I turn this, you'll see the shutter speed uh, go higher. Now, I can disable it and it, it doesn't become highlighted anymore. I can still turn it 
and it shows that it changes, but it's really not changing anything up there. This I, you'll, you'll use a lot is called the master gain, and we'll talk about that in class. Right now, it's set to zero dB. We call that flat. In other words, we are not amplifying our signal whatsoever. And if I do, when, if you want to uh, move it up, each time I touch it, it goes up in 3 dB increments, up to about 12 dB, and it stops. You can go to zero, and you can also go minus three. And we'll talk more about how you will use that. As you work your way down, uh, this is for your white and black balancing uh, adjustments, which you won't ever use uh, if you do everything correctly. Um, this would be if you had to fine tune some things. Uh, but at this level, we don't want you touching any of that. Uh, and they are disabled at this point until we get into the menu where we can accept them or, or use them. This is your camera number. This is your master black level. Now notice the knob on the bottom of the joystick. As I turn that, this master black goes negative if I go counterclockwise, and it goes larger as I go clockwise. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. When you first enable your panel, the relative settings uh, on the Sony's come to on. So I like to use them in the off position. And basically, uh, if it's off, you're, you're an absolute reading here versus a relative reading from where you're adjusting or where you're changing from. Uh, if you ever see an alarm, then you know there's something wrong with the camera chain. Uh, you'd want to check and see what's going on there. This indicator up here at 4.8 is the f-stop. And uh, we'll see how that works here in a sec. This is a place for a memory card that you can put in to either load or backup settings for this RCP. Uh, the two knobs that you use every time is coarse and sensitivity, and we'll talk about those in just a second. So the way uh, you select that particular camera is you press it down, and then it'll show up here on your monitor. And the first thing you want to do is you want to what I normally do is I'll come up here and I'll close. If you look up here first, uh, let me open the iris all the ways. Okay, so if you look at right now, we just finished a service, and I come down here and I press close, notice that goes to black. My waveform monitor drops lower, and this one drops lower. Um, I don't know if you can get in here a little bit closer, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move my line up. But that permanent line across there is zero. So when we cap the camera and we adjust the master black, the black levels at the bottom of the joystick as I go up and down like this, you'll see it on the monitor actually changing. Okay, if I set it really high, like that's almost 50 IRE, that's as black as black will ever be in that image. That will look terrible, okay? I can also take it and I can bring it down and when I calibrate it, I want to take my master black and I just want to set it right on that zero line. And then right about there. That is where the black should be set for this particular camera. And if you look down here back at the RCP, when I turn that knob, it's, it, it came to minus one. So remember what this is. So in case it ever gets moved in the middle of an event, like it goes to 21, and you look, or even higher, 32, it's very gray up there. So in this case, you would want to turn it back down to minus one, and you'd be back where you calibrated to. It's just a reference for you. Now, if you notice the joystick, when you push it forward, uh, let's uncap it. When you push it forward, the iris opens up. When I pull it backwards, it closes, so it gets darker. So you want to set the top end and the bottom end. And the sensitivity is setting the f-stop at the top end. So I'm going to turn this knob. This lens happens to top out at 1.7 on the f-stop. So I turn it left, and then I'll go back to the right until I hit 1.7. And I go back to 1.8 and 1.7. So I'm right on that edge where it goes from 1.8 to 1.7. That's exactly where I want to set the top. Now I'll go all the way to the bottom, and we want to set that, if you turn it left... All the ways to CL that's closed so I want to come to 20 I want to turn it back to the right where I'm still in the f-stop and it goes 22 and then close so I'm right on the edge of that so from the top to the bottom I'm getting the full aperture working uh, on 
that particular lens. So now, whenever you adjust the bottom one, you always have to go back and readjust the top. So I'm gonna go back up here and notice it's off because I moved that. So I wanna turn it to, to clockwise and go back to 1.8 to 1.7. And if you notice it right here, okay, there's 1.8, 1.7, perfect. And if you turn it too far to the right, for instance, I'll do that. I'll go all the ways to the right and I start pulling this down, it stays at 1.7 forever. We waste a lot of the stroke at the very top of the thing. And then right about here, it'll probably go to 1.8. So half of that is wasted. So that's why it's critical to set this thing right on the very edge. So we'll go counterclockwise to 1.8, 1.7. Now, when I pull it, shortly thereafter, it should start moving, see? So now I've got the whole range of the aperture from close all the way up to its maximum f-stop opening, the widest opening at 1.7. So that's kind of the, the foundational stuff that you need to do. Uh, when you come in, you want to you wanna set the, the sensitivity, the coarseness. You want to make sure the panel is active. You want to cap it and set the black levels. You want to make sure your, your uh, uh, scene file is set. And that, that's kind of the foundational stuff that you do when you first come in. We'll talk more about... Uh, uh, how to actually do some of the shading functions uh, as we go through this course. So I hope that helps explain a little bit, uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks.